Tung Tunguska. <laughs> Tunguska. The two Tunguska explosion in 1908. It's a mystery, right? How many people? I mean, we talked about this in my Vaughn chat room maybe about a month ago, and we figured it out, right, guys? The mantle of ice that's connected to the glass guy at 100 kilometers high. Probably what happened was a patch of ice just came crashing down. So I wanted to talk a little bit about that, if you don't mind. July 30th, 1908. In a remote area of Siberia, the morning calm was rocked by an explosion. The powerful blast was heard a thousand miles away. was an enormous fireball blast, uh, something on the order of 15 megatons of equivalent energy, which is roughly a thousand times that of the Hiroshima blast at the end of the Second World War. This was an extraordinary event. Because of the remoteness of the Tunguska region, it was almost 20 years before any government researchers visited the site. The first expedition to reach Tunguska was headed by Russian mineralogist Leonid Kulik. When the, the initial expedition got to the Tunguska area in, in 1927, the natives were reluctant to show the scientists into the region because they thought the god Agdi had devastated the area because of the wickedness that was going on, and he had destroyed the trees, killed the animals. Kulik eventually convinced locals to direct him to the blast location, Believing a meteorite had caused the massive explosion, Kulik assumed he would find a crater at the point of the meteorite's impact. To his surprise, there was none. He looked for meteorite samples on the ground because often when an, an object hits the earth, uh, it throws up debris and the debris is recoverable around the edges of the crater. But of course he didn't find that either. What Kulik discovered has stirred UFO debate for decades. At the blast's epicenter was a frozen swamp with an untouched clump of fully grown trees in the middle. That's very interesting. Keep going a little bit here, a little bit more. Circled around the grove, 10 million dead trees lay in a symmetrical ring, seemingly mowed down by a cosmic scythe. So here we have a, an enormous blast site with no crater, no fragments or meteorites around the rim of the crater, and this radial pattern of burnt trees knocked down for some 20 miles in all directions. In the years that followed, others traveled to Tunguska to study the unusual occurrence. There might have been fruits obtained by labors of another expedition sent by the head of the Soviet secret police in the late 1940s. But all we know is that such expedition existed. We do not know what has happened to the items and the information it collected. Further baffling ufologists were reports of radiation damage in the Tunguska blast region. There were also some reports of mutations taking place in plant life, and uh, even uh, some humans apparently uh, suffered some uh, gene damage. In 1947, Russian Army Colonel Alexander Kazentsev developed a remarkable theory based on information about the devastating consequences of America's atomic bomb attacks on Japan. He was listening to the report about the nuclear bombardment. Oh, we know that was fake, guys. A nuclear attack in Hiroshima, so let's discredit that part, but almost done here. The announcer gave a very long and very detailed description of how and in which direction trees, houses had fallen, and so on. How everything was hit. They were carpet bombs. He realized that what had happened in Hiroshima, exactly the same happened at Tunguska, only nearly half a century ago. Kazentsev hypothesized that the nuclear-like devastation seen at Tunguska must have been powered alien spacecraft. <laughs> but the scientific community rebuffs the UFO theory. Scientists claim the Tunguska explosion was caused by a rare but explainable natural event. Yes. That was that's true. They believe an asteroid no. to just three miles above the Earth's surface no. and then exploded. No. That's not what happened. As the object came in, it was it was being decelerated and squeezed by atmospheric forces. No, you're wrong, James. The force of a, of a hydrogen bomb. No. The shockwave smashed down the forest, knocking trees away from the blast and resulting in a pattern away from ground zero. 
But how would an asteroid explosion explain the reports of radiation damage in the Tunguska area? Uh -huh. Scientists say it can be attributed to the sheer magnitude of the explosion. As we mentioned before, the, the blast itself was kind of. times greater than the Hiroshima blast at the end of World War II. The blast would have generated a series of very high-speed charged particles and would have been the cause of some of the mutations in the gene structures of plants and animals. Mute? Okay, let's stop right there. High speeds, the charged particles cause mutations. Okay. Uh, are you guys familiar with cavitation? Cavitation. Cracking of quiescent cavitation. Let's watch this really quick here. This guy is just pounding on a glass bottle with his hand. Okay. Determine the cause of the breaking bottle. We pair a high speed video. Okay. Put an accelero accelerometer there at the bottom. The hammer strikes. Does the hammer strike does not break the bottle? Instead, cavitation collapse breaks the bottle. Okay, a cavitation collapse. Now, I'm not an expert on cavitation, but um, what I have learned is that cavitation is responsible, especially catastrophic cavitation, cavitation like what happened during the flood, is responsible for the transmutation of elements. It's also responsible responsible for the accelerated radioactive decay. So we have this radioactive decay. So when this crash of ice came down, crashing down to the ground, it, it created this cavitation acceleration of radioactive decay. It also created sonal luminescence, which probably burnt the trees. Uh, but there's no media crater, right, guys? There's no media crater. So Jason brought this up. He was talking about it. All trees were flattened. Nothing burnt. Okay, well, he says nothing burnt. It's burnt. No origin of impact. No evidence of iron anywhere. Sky burst pattern to the ground. So, you know, you're in the concave earth here, guys. There's definitely a glass sky and with ice attached to it. Now, that ice is transparent at that level because that level is very cold. It's extremely cold. It's above the mesopause. So it gets to minus 226 degrees Fahrenheit. But, just my dry eraser here. A patch of ice, you know, let's say just like this section of ice here just came falling down, came crashing down, bam. So let's move this. Move that ice down, bam. So when that crashes like that, it creates this cavitation and also this kind of well where the center is kind of unharmed and then the trees go out, outward like that. If, you hear, if you've been stunning up on Medi Megacry Meteors, how they fall, they even just one, one like 20 pound Megacry Meteors could sound like a missile fell to the ground. So people heard this from a thousand miles away. So the trees could flatten like that, okay? What we see in the middle is a lake with ice chunks, okay? Whether or not those ice chunks were already there from the ground or whether or not they actually fell from the glass sky. This is the, this is the answer to the Tunguska event. It was not a meteor. It was not an alien spaceship. It was a patch of the ice sky that was connected to the glass sky that fell down a long time ago. There's no other op option. There's no other explanation. And so over time, this actually healed back together, so a new form of ice. So this ice is transparent right at this level here. It only gets translucent when it, when it enters into the, the troposphere. That's when the crystallization happens. So you got crystallizing going on over here. So that's it's solved. See, once again, I have to sound like a, ro a broken record. Once you understand the concave earth, the glass sky, the ice attached to the glass sky, all these mysteries just come right into place. Tunguska was solved. But you know what? They probably won't admit it because it's a good money making operation. You know, to keep things mysterious, it's always good for, for the marketplace. This is the truth. This is the truth. Thanks for watching, guys.